Good morning. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, it is, um, we're so glad to be able to see some of you here in our chapel. But if you're not comfortable coming to the services right now, we do understand. Uh, we want you to feel safe. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to be able to concentrate only on the Lord. So when that time comes, we'll be glad to have you back with us. In the meantime, we're glad that we're able to connect through the Internet, on our Facebook page, or in our YouTube page. Uh, if you just search on Facebook or on YouTube, the Salvation Army Port Charlotte, you'll be able to find us. We will we'll continue to upload our services a little later in the afternoon. So keep in touch with our Facebook page, look at our posts, and we'll, we'll continue to let you know when every video will be uploaded on Sunday afternoons. A few of the announcements for this week. I believe Sydney has contacted some of the, our youth uh, for a virtual conservatory, please make sure that you take advantage of this opportunity and continue to sharpen your skills. More details to come, and if you want more information, please contact our BFI Sydney or contact my wife, Captain Claudia. The second announcement is that we continue to serve our Thursday morning lunch at 11.30. So if you or if you know somebody in need of a hot meal, come or send them our way on Thursdays at 11.30 and we'll be serving lunchbox. Something that's also really exciting that's taking place is that we made a partnership with Wawa, uh, the gas stations where we're able to receive breakfast on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you know, again, you or if you know somebody in need of a breakfast item, please come to our office and let us know of your needs and we'll be glad to help you to the best of our ability. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope that as you come this morning, as you connected through the web, you have your minds and your hearts open to what God has in store for all of us. God bless you. Our first song this morning is Never Once, uh, and it does talk about that we never walk alone. We may feel alone when we're not able to meet here in our church. We may feel alone when we see what's taking place in our world today. But this song talks about, um, about the presence of the Lord, and He's always with us. This is um, Never Once.
Did we ever walk along? Carried by your constant grace, held within your perfect peace. You never once, no, we never walk alone. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Every step we are breathing in your grace. around us constantly and this song reminds us of that truth amen you are here Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. Turning lives around I worship you I worship you You are here Mending every heart I worship you Yeah, I worship you You are way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 There is who you are. That is who you are. 
That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working. When I don't feel that you're working Never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. You are here. Good morning. I'm glad you're here with us again. Uh, if you're watching at home, we do understand. I'm glad that we're also able to be back in our building. Uh, it has been a long time since my wife and I have seen some of you. A lot took place since last time that we met here inside of our building. My wife and I were able to follow you through social media, text messages, phone calls, or even quick visitations outside of your homes. And it is just amazing to see that even though we're not able to gather together for so long inside of our church, uh, God is still working and people are still growing and we rejoice because of that. I received a few calls, text messages, and I had a few conversations since the time that we're able to make this difficult decision to close our church on Sundays. Um, I had one conversation in, in particular that stayed in my mind. I was uh, having a phone call with another friend of mine, uh, also an officer, and this friend told me, but Israel, don't you think that we should be the ones that remain open? Why are we closing the church? And my answer to him is that we were not really closing the church. We're just deploying the church into this world. And I think that we have this idea of church only being church inside of our walls comes from the idea of when the Israelites were able to build the temple and the tabernacle. You see, the temple in the tabernacle was not only a place of worship. For then, that was the central geographical location of Israel. That place was also intended to be the spiritual center of Israel. And what happened in the centers was to affect every single aspect of the life of the people of Israel. But church since COVID-19 has changed a little bit. Uh, it's no longer a site, a specific location. You see, we no longer went to church, but we became the church. And some will argue that we were always the church, but this 
time during this pandemic um, gave us a better idea of what it means to be the church wherever we go, wherever we are. But there are parts of our faith that they are very individualistic. And we need also this fellowship. We need this gathering together because we need the encouragement. We need the fellowship. And why is this concept of be the church wherever we are, but also gather together? This concept is important because we need to find that balance. And this is why we see this passage in Hebrews. You see, the book of Hebrews were written to people who were coming out of Judaism and they were new Christians. And those new believers, they began to have second thoughts. And, pe and maybe they were thinking about returning to old ways of worship, like temple sacrifices, in order to atone for their sins. But here, the altar of Hebrews reminds them that they don't have to do that anymore. You see, look at what verses 19 to 22 of chapter 10 tells us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have the confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is His blood, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with sincere heart, and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty consequences and having our bodies washed with pure water. The altar of Hebrews, we're trying to explain here that this battle is already won. They don't have to be offering sacrifices in the temple anymore. The ultimate sacrifice already took place. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, they were cleansed. Their sins were removed. However, on the next few verses, he also talks about the importance of gathering together. Look at verses 23 to 25. Let us hold to the hope we profess. For he who promises is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together, but encouraging one another. As believers, we have God with us. We have His Holy Spirit. But it's also important for us together as a church for their encouragement, for that accountability, in order to pray for each other, in order to cry and to laugh with each other. And it is important for us to also worship our God together because we are the body of Christ. And everybody needs a head. And our head is our Lord Jesus Christ, as we see in Colossians 1.18. The body is one in unity, but with many members. And it does not function well if we don't have all the parts. But with our natural talents and abilities, we can deceive ourselves thinking that we are a successful church without actually living as Jesus Christ being the head. It is the whole idea of us finding that balance. We have Jesus Christ with us. Yes, we go into the world. We can be the church anywhere we go. But it's also important for us to come together for that one hour or hour and a half for 30 minutes where we can come and collectively worship Him. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote in his book, Life Together, Let him who cannot be alone be aware of community. And let him who is not in community be aware of being alone. If you as a believer only worship the Lord inside of our church building as a group, then you become codependent of this one hour instead of relying on the power of God throughout the week. But also, if you are a believer that only wants to worship God by yourself, you become alone you become sad because you're going to miss the love and the wisdom that you can receive from others. Because, sure, there are parts of our spiritual life that are individual. That's you in God. That's me in God. But there are all the parts that we grow as a group, that we grow as a church, pruning each other, starting each other, correcting each other, encouraging each other. And again, is the whole idea that we got to find the balance. And then just like 
a relationship, there are times where it's going to be of great joy and there are times when it's going to be of drought, where it's going to be of sadness. But it, during both this up and downs, we can continue to bear fruits. So yes, we are the church, you and I, inside of our building, outside of our building. But there is a really important component for us to not dismiss this opportunity to be together. Sure, you may don't feel comfortable um, coming right now, which is, trust me, uh, my wife and I, we do understand that. We want you to be safe. We want you to feel that this is a place where you'll be able to concentrate on the Lord, only on the Lord. And when that time comes, we'll be glad to have you here. But don't completely forget of our time together. And maybe you're sitting at home and you're thinking why he's emphasizing so much uh, our time together. Because it is important, you know, to a certain extent. I do believe that uh, the church saved my life, but not the way that you expect um, that to take place. It wasn't a great sermon from the major. or It wasn't the talent of the praise band uh, or it wasn't an elaborate program. Um, it was, I think the church saved my life 20-something uh, years ago, really in those events that I was even able to understand as I was standing up and sitting down and singing hymns that I didn't understand uh, and reading passages and even sometimes having a hard time finding the passage in my, in my Bible. Um, God used the church and used the people that was around um, to point me in the right direction. And that's something that I will never forget. I will never forget the love and the care that the soldiers of the Central Corps show uh, to a stranger like me as I continue to come Sunday after Sunday. Yes, I am the church outside of my building, inside of the building, but it's also important for us to have this time together. And we hope that soon more and more of us will be able to be back together here. Yes, I rejoice. I rejoice that we're able to open the doors on Sunday. I rejoice there are a few of you that decided to join us this morning. Um, I rejoice that we're able to see each other's face again. We may, uh, maybe it's going to take a little bit for us to get used to this new routine, to this new normal. Um, maybe it will be awkward, it will be uncomfortable. But I am so glad that God has been with us outside of our church and He is here with us inside of our church. May God bless you this morning. May God protect you and you and your family. And just remember how important it is, our brothers and sisters, and to have this fellowship with each other. Amen. Thank you for being with us today, inside of our chapel or over the web. Let's pray as we end our time of worship today. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your mercy, your love, your compassion. Thank you, Father, that we uh, get to see each other today inside of our building. And we also rejoice because even though from the time where we're not able to gather together, you were still working in our, in our lives. Father, protect us this week. Help us again to make good decisions. Bless our leaders as they continue to guide us through this difficult time. Bless the Salvation Army, Father, as we continue to assist those in need. And Father, help us to find this balance between uh, being the church inside, but also being the church outside. And help us that we're going to continue to find value on both of them. Father, be with us this week. We love you. We thank you. And we pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.